how to use the gradient tool in Affinity Photo. There's the gradient tool. Looks very, very similar to the tool just slightly below it, which is a brush. But it's, I wish they'd change it slightly. Anyway, that's the gradient tool just there. And you can find that in the tools. Key thing is, you need something to work with. So a layer menu and new layer. Of course, if you're adding a gradient to an image, you don't need the new layer aspect. Obviously, I've got no image there, so I'm just using a layer. And what you can do, you can simply drag the length around. You can just extend the length. You can also change the origin point. And you just move that around. You can change the angle using both of the control points. You can then rotate again, and of course extend out. Now, the default is a very boring white to gray. That's just the default. Of course, there's vast number of other colors that you can use, and you can find that quite a few of those in the swatches. And you can also modify, of course, the gradient itself. But I'm gonna go show you with this at the moment. So type, you can change the type. There's elliptical type. Now, because that's locked, what happens it's basically the same as radial. But you can unlock and then you can squeeze it so you can create a very nice elliptical gradient. You can also lock it again and then when you change any of the control points, you can change origin of course, etc. But you change any origin, the aspect ratio will remain. So you can create some interesting ellipses there and you can of course now resize it. Other types, you've got radial, which is much the same as this, except for obviously the lacking of one of the control arms. So you can go in and out, you can change origin point, and that's it. You can also go to type and select conical. There's bitmap at the end, that's for weirdly added in, personally. It's more for patterns than a gradient. But you, of course, can use it for similar gradient designs. And you can modify the angle as well as the origin point as well as the length there. We well, need view menu, studio, and swatches as well as layers. And you can select a swatch. When you've got the gradient tool selected, just select the swatch and that will be filled in that current layer. And you, of course, can continue to modify it. You can change the elliptical, of course, or linear, depending on what you're using as the type. And you can still, you can move the stops. So you don't have to keep the colors that were set in the swatches. So you can click on any of those dots and just simply drag, drag them along the line. You can squeeze them together to create very intense designs or push them further apart. You can squeeze that again to create more radial or elliptical. And also what you can do, you can modify the midpoint, that little line in between the two dots. You can drag that back and forth as well and that will make it sharper or more blurry. And you can modify those. Now you can modify them also in the top. There's a, just a, there. You see exactly the same color scheme. We can click on that and you can modify it there as well. And there's a few additional features I think that are quite nice. Obviously you can change the color and you can change the stops. You can move the stops around. Sadly, you can't expand out the size of that panel. It'd be really nice. So it would really limit the amount of stops you can use. But you can also add stops to it. You can click on that little line and add a stop. You can also click on a stop and drag it off the line to delete it or click the delete. There's colors. You can simply change the color if you want a different color. So all those stops can have different colors. It doesn't have to stay the same as swatch. And it doesn't modify the stop in the swatches stops. It's, this is purely independent. 
Well, you can also do, you can go to the opacity field and you can set that to say like 0% or 50%, etc. If you set it to 0%, you'll be able to see through to the, the background. So you can create some very interesting ring designs as well as creating very unusual combinations of gradients by using the transparency. And you can add transparency to any of the stops. In fact, you can make the whole thing transparent if you wanted to, or reduce it down to 50%, etc. Now, I'm just going for linear. And what you can also do, if you are lazy, like me, you can quickly click reverse. But of course you could, if you wish, simply just drag the stops around. Reverse is much easier. Does it very quickly. Now, you can also use gradients with shapes. So create a shape, and it's a vector shape, so it can be any size. And the current field is white, you can see there. But what you can do, you can go over to the swatches. Just go to the swatches panel. Just so you can select the gradient tool there, just click there. And set a gradient. It's quite just as easy to do it. And of course, you can modify your gradient. You can just modify it there. So you can create your own gradient stops. You don't have to use the ones in the swatches. But you can move it around, change your origin point, length, etc. Exactly the same as the layer. But also what you can do, you can go to swatches and click on there and just add a gradient that way. And you could obviously got all those number of gradients there. Your set of gradients may be different from mine. Affinity Photo comes with a selection of different gradients and you can find it in the gradients category. There's gray colors and then gradients. And you can then obviously manipulate the midpoints, change all the colors, etc. You can tweak it to your heart's content. Now, once you've changed it, a really good idea, I think, and that's why I've got quite a few gradients there, is to add it to the swatches. Because if you find something you really like, save it. Always useful to save it. Nothing worse than creating something and then, what was it? What You just can't rebuild it again. So I like to save quite a lot of work, resources, as I go. And any application that makes it easy to save resources is brilliant, as far as I'm concerned. So you've got your design there. Now what you can do, you can go over to the Move tool. And then as soon as you select the Move tool, you'll notice, you click on that gradient, you've got the fill over there. And you can see now the fill has got the gradient. And that's what you want to go if you want to add it to your library. Simply go over to the add there and there's an add command there. Add current fill to the library, to the swatches. The palette, as it says. So you can simply add your gradient and it's stored with the type. So it will always be radial or elliptical, but you can always, of course, change it simply by the type option. Just change it to something else. And you can select any of those gradients, as well as create your own, of course. Now, what you can also do, you can create a new layer, a layer, a new layer, and you can combine them and use the gradient tool. So you can just add a gradient, go to swatches, select a, a swatch. And then, once you've done that, you can obviously modify it. Now, personally, I generally don't do this with a gradient tool. I prefer using the layer menu and fill layers. I just want to show you that you can use the gradient tool to create combinations of gradients, obviously creating multiple layers and add another gradient to that and then use blending mode. So you can blend between gradient colors created by a gradient tool, but the fill layers are infinitely more flexible, I think, than the gradient tool. Grain tool is great, but it's not probably the best for manipulating and combining multiple layers. You can do it that way. And of course, you can create multiple. I'm, I've just got two layers there. I could create five or ten layers and then go to layer menu and I could merge them all together. Perfectly reasonable as well. And of course, I haven't something I haven't done in this tutorial. You can also apply effects such as obviously the filters menu. Go to that apply filters to it, as well as, of course, go to the layers menu and new live filters and add layers that way. And then you can add twirls, etc., and ripples. The filters menu has got a lovely one like deform or 
mirror, which works amazingly well with gradients. So a whole range of different super colorful designs can be created using this gradient tool and gradients in shapes, etc. And of course you can create your own gradients, your own gradient stops, create thousands of different designs. Hope you found this of interest. Please subscribe to Graphic Extra channel. Always adding new tutorials about Photoshop, Illustrator, Finity Photo, Finity Designer, and many, many others. Also, please add some comments. Always appreciated. A dislike or like. Thank you much.